reaction. So in biochemistry, instead of using either one of those equations, we use this equation here. But basically, it's the same exact equation, just it's in a slightly different form. So this is Faraday's constant, so it's 96,500. And what it basically tells us is it's the amount of charge that exists of, on one mole of electrons as they move along that particular um, uh, cell membrane. Now Z, what Z is, it's basically the value of the charge on that particular ion. So if the charge, if, if let's say we're dealing with sodium ions, the Z value is plus one. If we're dealing with chloride ions, the Z value is negative one. If we're dealing with, let's say, potassium, it has a positive one, it's also positive one and so forth. So basically Z is the charge on the ion. It could be positive negative one, positive negative two, positive negative three. Now, if we're dealing with an uncharged neutral molecule, Z is zero, and so the delta G is zero because that neutral charge will not feel any type of electric force within that voltage difference. So essentially, this is the equation that we can basically use to tell us how much energy we have to input, we have to give a charged molecule or ion to basically move it across that particular voltage difference. And by the same exact reasoning, if this is zero, that means it will not move in any direction. If it is negative, what that basically means is as it moves, it releases energy, and so no energy must be, no work must be done. And if this is negative, what that means is the the uh, the process is a passive um, a passive uh, process. It involves passive transport. If this is positive, that involves active transport, actually using energy, so doing work on that charged species to move it across that particular membrane. So. By the way, delta V is simply the difference in the voltage between this side of the membrane and the other side of the membrane. So this is the voltage difference, the electrical potential difference, what we call the electrical gradient. So delta G describes the amount of energy that must be transferred into the molecule or the molecule releases into the environment to basically move between the two sides of the membrane and to demonstrate how we can use this particular equation, let's take a look at the following diagram. So let's suppose we have a cell membrane and in that cell membrane we have an open channel and the channel basically allows the movement of these sodium ions. And notice in this case, we didn't have to consider the channel because we were looking at these nonpolar molecules and they can simply diffuse across that membrane. So let's take a look at this particular case. So let's suppose that the resting potential, so the electrical potential difference between the two sides of the membrane in this particular case is negative 45 millivolts, millivolts. And what that basically means is this quantity here is more negative than this quantity here as we show in this particular case. Now we know that on the outside, we're going to have a larger concentration of sodium ions than on the inside. And before we actually calculate anything, the question is, will these sodium ions actually move from this side to this side of that cell membrane? So what we see is because we have a higher positive charge on this side, these ions will tend to move into that cell, so in this direction. And what that means is this number has to be negative for that to actually be true. Because if we open up the channel, these ions will want to spontaneously move down their, electro, uh, their, their electrical gradient from a high electric potential to a low electric potential. And so if we calculate delta G, we see that the Z value is positive one, the F is 96,500 coulombs per mole, and we see that this quantity, so delta V is, so we have to use V not milli V, and so it's negative 0.045, and we multiply these out and we get a negative quantity. So delta G is equal to negative 4,342 joules per mole. And so we see that once we open up the channel, because there exists this electrical gradient, so we have 
a high electrical potential on this side, a low electrical potential on the other side, there will be a movement, so a spontaneous movement from the, in, from the outside to the inside of that cell. And that's exactly what the negative delta G actually tells us. So if the delta G is positive, energy must be inputted to actually move the charged species across that particular cell membrane. So if instead we wanted to basically move the sodium from this side to this side, this, po this value would have been positive. And so a delta G in this case would have been positive. But because our delta G is negative, we're basically moving from this side to this side, and that means no energy must be inputted into that molecule to move it in that direction. So what that means is this will be passive transport, not active transport. And finally, now that we know what concentration gradient is and electro gradient is, we can basically combine these two concepts into a single concept. So we combine this equation with this equation. And so what that gives us is the following equation. And this equation is the equation that we can basically use to quantify and measure how much energy exists between the two sides of the membrane for molecules that have unequal distribution along the two uh, membranes as well as an unequal charge distribution. So if the charge distribution is the same, then that means this will be zero. But if the concentration distribution is the same, what that means is this quantity is zero. But if neither the concentration distribution is the same or nor is the uh, charge distribution the same. That means these two quantities are not zero and we have to use both of them to actually calculate what that delta G is. And once again, when that delta G is positive, the process will be an active transport process. If it's negative, it will be a passive transport because that doesn't require energy for that molecule to move down its electrochemical gradient.